Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description, stop by raprankings.com, or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast. Track 9, The Big Day, featuring Francis and the Lights, our main man. Our mainest uh, of men, okay. Our mainest of men, you know, all-time musician. I'll talk about it shortly. Produced by Chance the Rapper, Francis and the Lights, Justin Vernon, Peter Cottontail, Nico Segal, Dixon, and Carter Lang. Hurts me to my heart, but I have to be honest, six plus. I concur, but even lower for me, flat six. And okay. I hate to say this because, you know, the first thing you hear on this song is Francis, one of Moles and Mel's favorite artists of all time. And he sounds good. I just don't like what he's singing. And then Chance follows up singing the same thing, just more insufferably and baby-like than the beat drops. And it sounds like a piece of production I could hear Francis on. And I'm not mad at that aspect of the song at all. I just don't like the chorus, which is basically the whole song. And Chance's weak ass baby voice performance does not work for me at all. He basically just repeats the same shit over and over. Then Francis comes back with the like cursing with a ah, dick, 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 oh, fuck it, bro, fuck it, fuck it, fuck that's it. the point. And can I just say that's the point in the song? I had to ask myself. I remember feeling this way in 2019. I feel the same way, even stronger. I'm like, is this dark sided? <laughs> like, here's the thing. I know Francis was like deep into his like letting loose era. Like, not you know, only that, he no was no god and all of that. He was deep like in being his free like, and working with Kanye and, era too at this right. time. But like, what is happening? Like, this is the title track on the marriage album, and you're like screaming obscenities. It's like almost feels like intrusive thoughts. It's like Tourette's. It's like, and it's, it's are you mixed. sure you want, you're ready to settle down? It seems it, like you got this yeah. pent up like. It's mixed very oddly too, like the way it comes in and the vocal effect. And it's demonic it's like, sounding, bro. Yes, it's it like I, I call it almost like an aggro sort of like drill meets trap sort of delivery from Francis, which doesn't work for me at all until he goes there at the very end. And he starts wailing instead of rapping and doubling Chance's vocals. And, yeah. you know, then the outro starts reminding me of some of the shit Francis was doing at the, like, Kanye Sunday services. And at this oh, point, yeah. I'm just thinking to myself, we can't do Francis like this. And I completely changed the game plan for the archival audio for this song. I was going to go through the history of Francis's, you know, hip-hop productions and collaborations I'm going to save that for Thank Me Later when we get the first one. Nice. We'll do that then. Right. Karaoke. Got it. Okay. Right now, this is not my top 10 Francis in the Light songs, but these are 10 songs, and I tried to be sort of democratic in my selections, meaning like no more than two from the albums and no more than one from the EPs. Okay. And I just want to play people some music from Francis in the Lights because – it would be a damn shame if you listen to this album in anticipation for this review, and this is his most prominent feature on the entire album, and you think, wait, don't Moles and Mel like this guy? This sucks. Bro, I'm down. The official Francis in the Lights jam session. Yes, so we got the Francis jam session here. Mel, you got in the folder 10 songs. We're going to go through chronologically, and okay. uh, you'll hear how things start to become a little more beat-based as things progress, but we're going to start with my goals. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, oh, and, and everything, a joke right now, everything I'm playing you right now is like an eight plus or above for me. Listen, this man is, and this word gets tossed around a lot, but I mean, it. he is a generational artist. He is. So allow us to ease you into Francis and the lights as the Moore's right did for me. The right, yeah, in 2016, the right way, okay? He's great. And, and allow us to walk you through this. Here's my goals um, from the project Striking. So here you go.
works. Hold on. What's that? There we go. It's gonna be very hard for me to not. I, I don't wanna like. <laughs> I'm, I wanna there's those sing parts along. Though, there. you know, there's those yeah. parts. Yeah, and then parts. Okay, I need parts and then parts. You know, right, so. you find yourself lonely. Man, maybe the king of going there. This man is a fearless artist, and I. All right. It was- if the music industry was different, or rather, if it was the same as it was in like the '80s, this guy is like a mix between Prince and Billy Joel. That's yeah. if I had to if yeah. I had to narrow it down, because there's other influences too. There's James Brown. There's Peter Gabriel. There's you'll hear other influences, but like if I had to boil it down, it's that. You know, the man dances too, like. All right, I'm gonna just a quick video, music video style. Go look up the video for the top. Oh look my god, that. you have to see the t- the okay. top. I can't even play you. You have to see the video for it. You gotta see it you for that. And it. Dar, like watch his early videos, like his, you know, uh, it'll be better era videos, especially. You'll see, Ooh. you know, he is putting on like a choreography and dance clinic, just god. like like begging to be noticed. Okay. What, what's the joint like? The longer form was it like the the white room? Is it the white or room the... concert? Yeah. Oh my god! That's a, when he starts hitting that footwork on um. What's the song he was doing? The, the little dance, man. <laughs> god, god, is it? Oh my god, it's bad. All right, okay, we we got we more. Keep going. All right, I got we ten got joints more. in here, so let's go to the next joint. It's All that right. lime from the uh, lime ah. win twelve uh, inch. Yeah, I brought this in for this week in Mills and Mel once. Yeah, so check out Lime, y'all. Here we go. I'd buy it, all right? Yeah. So now we can transition. I'm going to play two joints from the It'll Be Better album. This was, uh, all intents and purposes, his first album. He had Mm -hmm. dropped some EPs and singles before it. But this shit is a... This shit is a fucking 10. I'm playing them out of order. I'm playing them out of order in the uh, sequence of the album, but Knees to the Floor. Oh, Knees to the Floor is like an A-plus for me. The other one's a 10. We're getting there. Okay. Knees to the four. That one's Knees a nine. to the four might even be a nine now. I don't know. Because when it, it's a song, whenever it pops in my head, I have to just go play it. It's one of those. You know? So here we go. Track four and it'll be better. Knees to the floor. Oh, my God. <laughs> to the 
charged for the rest of this review of this long ass album y'all don't know what's happening right now you're not ready this is a spiritual thing that's you're happening not right fucking now. shaking and if you are then you gotta go check out this music okay <sighs> okay man. so this is a uh, mel 10 this is a moles nine okay? yes this is four days from that fucking it'll be better man mel 10 this is an unrequited love classic it's one of my all-time favorite songs Check this out, folks. Sometimes I just pull up the old rehearsal footage of them just kind of jamming out with like, oh, in that like room in just like the green room of like yeah. college, yeah. like auditorium or something. And I just like tweak out to that shit. I don't need no fucking yeah, drugs. Man. Okay. I got this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Francis performances, video, live performance. They're designed to tweak out to. I, you, you know, the famous. I cried, like I was having a normal day, and I and I just broke down. I just broke down. It was just, it was too much for me in that moment. Okay, it's, folks, don't you like this more than like our marking out over Hamilton? Okay, this is this is safe cult talk. This is up. This is light and love, is what Francis is. This is that's real darkness music. and and confusion. <laughs> and we're gonna move to the like a dream EP. And a uh, record called Betting on Us. Uh, hey, what the Rab fans are doing every week. They're betting they're on their betting boys on and Mel. They're betting on, they're betting on the third member. They want, you know, they want it. They need it. All right. well, we're not going to let you down. We're, we're, we're not. We're not. I'll, I'll die trying to not, you know. So here we go. Oh, no. But 
so much oh my god by the way <laughs> the performance of that i believe from the mercury lounge which is shot from the audience is one of the most electrifying like fan cam performances i've ever seen oh man i'm being healed i'm being uplifted i'm being i'm feeling things again you know I I I I need this right now. Okay, so we're gonna move to Farewell Starlight. I think it's his best album. Oh, that it's was a, a it's time. A, that was one a, of the only bright spots of 2016. It's a 10 out okay. of 10. Perfect takeaway. Maybe only one song has a seven, and everything else is eights, nines, and tens. I could bring in so many different songs from this album. This album may have actually fucking saved my life. Oh, All right. Man. In a very dark time for Mool's and Mel, you know, yeah. trying to navigate the waters of this fucking industry for the last time, as we would come to find out. Yeah. So oh, I got deep. two <laughs> I got two records for you. One of them is a dance record and the other one is more, you know, emotional, contemplative and uh, life affirming, maybe. So let's listen to I Want You to Shake. We played it on the show before. We will play it again because it's a time. <laughs> Another 10. I, I believe I gave it. Yeah, I think this is another it's 10. 10. It's a 10. I yeah. Mean, it's never been clear to me that it's a 10. And oh, this is the album yeah. where, like, he's almost, like, full-on electro. Yeah. There is there yeah. is some, you know, piano on the album and whatnot. But, like, this is the first, I would say, like, fully beat-driven album for the most part. This is the album that I got to enjoy after having been Francis pilled by, by by mules. It was the first new Francis in the Lights album, and this was like Matakal 2000 because I remember I liked it, and like with time, it eventually got to the point where like I like everything. Like so, it's one of them, one of them ones, no skips. This is a ten. I want you to shake. All right, check it out. Folks, you gotta understand. All right, listen. Uh, the only real music's gonna last. All that where's little the, bullshit. Where's the thankful, today bro? And going tomorrow. Oh, oh, we get. Where's the thing? Let me see. Where the thankful at? Uh, what are we looking for? Where's the, which thing? Sounds like Wolves and Mel have been fucking each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see. Let me get a drink of water. Hold on. See, now I got to hit this now that you said that. All right, listen. And yeah, I want to put that out there, man. This man ain't never seen me naked. <laughs> I ain't never seen to. him naked. We don't desire to do no shit like that. We ain't going out like that. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my God. Listen. Listen. It's called great music. Okay. And, and I, I know what they're going to say. I know what I know what people think. Yeah, I know. About, I know what they think. Fuck about Francis. So I gotta I gotta hit this too. Because 
I play it for people and they're like, uh, they don't know. I'm going to tell you right now, Francis in the Lights is not no mysterious shit. Ain't nothing mysterious about it, okay? This ain't it's that blonde, music. okay? This is no. a song, structure, you know? Choruses. Exactly. Music. Music. Real music, okay? We got more. All right, All so right. this is this is the more emotional of the two from Farewell Starlight. This is It's All Right to Cry, who... Like is it uh, for a long time? Like I liked this song on the album. It wasn't my favorite. I don't think it's my favorite now. But the lyrics have really been hitting me in such a fucking way. This might I be was the a most adopter. Yeah, this is one of the most beautifully written fucking songs. I've come to the conclusion. So let's listen wow. to the lyrics, especially. Okay, here we go. It's all right to cry. second verse always makes me cry every single time it's, it's, i wouldn't mind the leaving if leaving uh, i can't even say it i wouldn't mind the leaving if leaving didn't mean you have to say goodbye i always want to leave but i never want to say goodbye uh, i can't a, even read it without crying I, it's not even this, just just i mean my, t- my the tears are fucking flowing man clinic and songwriting and song craft and emotionality and meaning and, and power and impact in, in music. Okay. Like <laughs> I was late to that record. I remember talking with, I kept telling you then, like, stop fronting on this record, bro. <laughs> it finally connected. It finally connected. That one second day. verse has to take you there. You know, oh, we got three more. Okay. This next one, he did perform it on Fallon. There are uh, changes to the lyrics that I like in that version, but yeah. I got to play the studio version because it's the most polished sounding. So this is the title track from, as of right now, his last album. Yeah, just for us. And I mean, it got took off. The Fallon got took off YouTube, which is a damn shame. If y'all want it, I got it. Okay, you got to see it. It's great. They didn't deserve him, all right? <laughs> Pardon me marking out, but they really didn't. Questlove and the debate, they understood. They was jamming. They got it, all right? So just for us, folks, here we go. Oh, my God. Already. Already. <laughs> all time, like, opening notes in a song someone want to take you home don't let them even when you're on your own everyone's watching 
watch you They don't run your life They don't understand what's good for you I know you're not scared Anymore But everyone's watching but thank you for asking buttery actually i'm like I, I i'm like spiritually uh just like fucking floating you know <laughs> this music makes you float okay no pennywise this is this is a special kind of music okay it is it, it really is we got two more mel all right this next one also from the just for us album back in time another oh, another man. just Listen. like Another one that just like, like it's all right to cry. The lyrics really dig deep into my soul. This was my "It's All Right to Cry." You got to understand. I need this song in so many different because you know I don't want to be that guy. It's constantly ruminating and living in the past and thinking should have, would have, could have. As whatever. much as we do live in the past, we we are very nostalgic individuals, the two of us. Yeah. So this record was like that dose of it was the strength to continue and not do that to myself this right, song is nostalgia is a before. double-edged sword it can make you yes. feel but it can also make you feel very empty inside yeah and it can trap you and you can because you you're chasing something living. that won't be no matter what you buy no matter mm. where you go or what you do you are not going to be able to tap into the pure naivete and innocence and just awe of being a child it's over it's it, leave you the know, memories I, alone or at least use them responsibly nostalgia is a serious drug i've always said it you don't want to get caught in it because then you won't live your present or your future you will just be stuck in the past and this is a song to remind myself to not do that uh this is the last i rated i gave this a flat nine it could be a 10 now this is a 10. See. it's just so it's so obvious to me <sighs> folks here you go back in time I know it's got so bad Can't look up I know it's got so bad Facts I know you can't go back Can't go 
Well, this is perhaps more unsafe to play because I know this is one that both reduces us to tears. This is May I Have This Dance, which Chance the Rapper did appear on a remix of. But this is live at WFUV. Oh, um, come on, bro. You brought the live. September 28, 2017. This is one of the more emotional, acoustic kind of like him and just the piano performances I've ever heard. This is going to seal the deal. You guys are on mail. You guys are Francis fans now. It's not a no personal, personal attack. attack. I, I'm as moved by it as you are. I'm, I'm I gonna... remember telling you, I think what ha- we were on the phone, you had stepped away, and I had pressed play, and I was just watching it. First time I'd ever seen it. And within a split second, I just started sobbing. Like, it, it was like a light switch. I was fine, and then I was sobbing. I was just like, I... I well, this does right, kind I, of, I need a you know, I need a this does bring us back into, you know, the big day as this is, may I have this dance? And this ain't the, the studio version. version. This is the only non-studio version I'm playing tonight. All right, here we go. In the ground we bury The seeds of a pear tree All the things we carry Now we're down to our bare feet May I have this dance To make it up to you (laughs) Can I say something crazy? Oh, I love you. <laughs> Give me both your hands to make it up to you. Let me spin and excite you. We are bound to inherit the sins of our parents. And all the people we pass through Now we're down to the last two May I have this dance to make it up to you? Can I say something crazy? I love you I just wanted to hear this, the way he hits this one (laughs) Give me both your hands to make it up to you let me spin and excite you. Hold on, here, here we go. Oh. 
Oh, you're never gonna say it till I do. Oh, man. Give me one more chance. It's all fucked up now. <laughs> what I'm gonna do now? Hold on, let me. I gotta get the puffs. I gotta get the puffs. It is. Man. That music <laughs> was happy and it believed in love, okay? It broke me down all right. <laughs> it got me. Oh. oh, man. Okay. I've gotten emotional on the show before, but. Not like this. I couldn't let Francis go out like this on this review where it's the first time we actually get to showcase him in the context of an album and this is what we get. This is the impression that we're left, you know, on all the people who are going to listen to this album alongside, you know, accompanying this review. I mean, we can't let him go out like this. So, you know, I hope at this point we've, you know, made our case for this man. And that this song is just not representative. I'm glad you did this specifically here because you talk like, may I have this dance? The remix with Chance. I hate that Francis, in the eyes of the the masses, is in the just eyes like of this guy fans, who co- right who collaborates with artists bigger. Than, he's like just some Mister Hudson to most people. Like if you that. look at his most it. played songs, it's like the May I Have This Dance remix. It's like Frank, like Boney Bear. They yes, you know the friends, video with Kanye in Kanye's it. Kanye's in it. Yeah, you know Take it's me like to the he's, light with Kanye. Right. and it's like this is not even scr- like this man on his own deserves respect as a singular independent musician. And I hate. I, I'm happy for him for the money, the exposure, you know that comes from that. But I feel like it. it sort of you know it's the gift and the curse because they're not francis fans they're fans of whoever they came for and they might have took this away in the process you right. know it's like and i tell people no this this guy is he's a guy all right there's a he's reason a, why a everyone from drake to kanye and everyone in between has worked with him at this point they but, know you know, they know i i really feel like we're in a musical ecosystem a music industry and a distribution, you know, issue where it's it, it's just not conducive to the kind of music he makes, becoming like the biggest artist in the world. But throw me a frickin' bone here, you know, like get this guy some some at least mid level publicity, and you know, allow him to continue to make a career out of this music. You know, like you can't have artistry like this remain you know like work just working for other people in hopes that they're able to scrap by what the way francis and the lights has been treated by the public i think i speak for both bulls and i when i say it's so devastating that we don't even want to talk about it (laughs) okay it's it should not be that he should be heralded as one of the artists of a generation I truly believe that. Obviously, we're marks. You know, I'll, I'll hit yeah, the but drop. I brought, I brought the evidence. I brought the evidence. You, we okay? brought the evidence. Listen, if y'all don't feel us, you don't feel us, but you should feel us. I'll hit it. There's some people out there. I know they're listening. They heard the 10 track suite and they're like, what a mark. <laughs> fine. I'll own it. But the guy is an all time great. And I, and I really believe that. I'll stand on it. Okay. I'll, I'll fight tooth and nail on it. And some of the formless, noodly ass music that people put over, okay, it, it right. disgusts me. Okay, so we can move on. It's... I just, I just need to let it be known that Francis ain't no hoe. This song is not a good representation, and I'm trying to show you, motherfuckers, the light. Yeah, not that take me to the light. Okay, nah, this it's, is the real this, light. This is what I'll speed through, and we can be done here. Um. He he. This was a true like season of biggest disappointments. This was that for me in 2019 because I was thinking when it came on. Hey, at least Francis put Francis on the song, saved the album, 
And when he couldn't even do that, I'm like, oh, no. Like, what's happening? I You've went to this track some, first when the album leaked. You know? Uh, we we played some of it. Uh, ten song, you know, we, we understand how sometimes Francis' lyrics can be very obscure and enigmatic and sort of cryptic. You know, I kind of feel that way about we're only going to survive if we go crazy. But maybe I'm maybe I'm a mark, but I feel him on that because you can't try to stay sane in a crazy world. You'll never find. I peace. guess if Trust you think me, about I'm it that stuck. way, sure. But I just think of like that meme. It's like she's so crazy and she's at like Rite Aid and she just has like a frozen bag of Tostinos on her head. <laughs> it looks like Becky Lynch. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Right, be, right. Because of this song, that's kind of where, where you have to how you have to interpret it i'm not, not calling francis right. a feral joy you know what but oh no he's not a feral joy negroni at all but i do i'm concerned for him because he's caught up hopefully he's gotten away from kanye he's Look, found the, himself i mean the last time I, we, we heard from happy, him ultimately we got a we got a positive transmission from him a couple months ago so yeah you know we know we know he's all right and he's not in like the broom closet watching dumbo on a projector and like and trying to climb clubs. up into the heavens. Yeah, it listen, it, it, seriously, he don't he don't talk often. He's not extremely online. That's not him. So when he does say something, it means something. When he does something, you know, it means something. Um, he moves very intentionally. Yeah. You know, so but this ain't a good representation. And I stand on that. So Man, I've I've been emotionally tapped <laughs> in this yeah, we got to keep going because there's still like more. Well, this is the, this was the big archival, yeah, you know, suite of the album. This hasn't been an album with a lot of archival audio attached to it. So we had to do it because we couldn't let what we feel to be an all time artist go out like that. Because and not just an all time artist, because like if he was an all time artist and he had the level of fame and notoriety and we wouldn't have to defend him. success Everybody like, already financially, knows, you know, then yeah. I wouldn't care. I'd just be like, look, I'm a big fan of this guy, but this is a dud, but right. Considering his status and the way most hip hop fans just view this guy, as Mel said, they just tied him to other artists. Yes, he's just, just like, like an he's accessory garnished, he's, to, yeah. you know, he's just another fucking Mr. Hudson. No, that's not what happened. Yeah, no. Okay. He is more than you a only feature know, on your, you don't you even know, know half the story. You know, a sliver of the fucking story. Right. This is a footnote, so, so just don't forget that. Yeah. Well, man, it's not. I wasn't ready. You, you, <laughs> you want to go on the run? We're gonna run away from our emotions. <laughs> yeah, okay. sure. All right. Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description. Stop by raprankings.com or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast.